Hello, everyone. This is the Parks Academy, where we discuss and celebrate all things theme parks related. My name is Paige. My name is Stephen. <laughs> going to be another one of those episodes, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know why. I just looked at you and I just started, <laughs> started laughing. Well, today we are actually not talking about Disney. We are talking about the sweetest place on earth. What's the sweetest place on earth, Stephen? Um, Hershey Park. Hershey Park. In Yay. Hershey, PA. PA. Look at you. <laughs> Sounding like an East Coaster. Yeah, like an official East Coast boy. Yep. Hershey, Pennsylvania, folks. We're talking about Hershey Park. So I'm not trying to blow up our OPSEC, but we we live like 30 minutes away from Hershey Park. And obviously we are the Parks Academy. So like we love theme parks. And we can't we can't spend all of our time in Disney. That's just like poor marketing. Um, so yeah, Hershey Park is clutch. I went there for the first time in 2016 with you, and um, I'm actually really glad we're covering this place because it is it's one of those rare theme parks. It's very 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 good. It is very good. The theming yeah. is very consistent. The quality of the rides is incredible. It is like. You don't really get something that is even close to Disney's caliber when you're talking about theme parks, yeah. but Hershey is definitely way above most run-of-the-mill theme parks. Except for the food, but we, we will get to that. We will get to that. Um, yeah, this will be a fun one. It, it, it's a cool place. So we are going to talk about our ideal day in Hershey Park, and uh, for those of you who have been gracious enough to stick with us through our uh, Ideal Day series in Disney, basically what we're going to do is we're going to go over attractions, entertainment, dining, and then just like random things to do that we like. Um, so I'm going to let Paige kick it off with attractions. She has a she sent me her list ahead of time, and there's like so many things on here, so we'll see if I get a chance to uh, <laughs> to even jump in. So here's the deal with me and Hershey Park. I have been going to Hershey since I was a little kid because, like Steven said, we live only about 30 minutes from here. But where I grew up was not even an hour from Hershey Park. And so it was very convenient for us to go way cheaper than going to Disney just simply because of the travel and the cost of getting into the park. And we've seen so many changes in Hershey, even since we first started going together in 2016. Yeah, 100%. And we actually bought season passes the year that we were married, and we use them fairly regularly. So we'll talk about that another time. But I want to kick it off with some attractions that, for me, are non-negotiables. And typically, no matter what time of year you go to Hershey, you can pretty much get on most of the rides that you want to get on. It is a pretty big park now at this point, and there are several large rides, especially thrill rides and especially roller coasters. It's not always been the case. I have to admit that I didn't prepare for this episode at all. So I'm like on the website looking at their uh, attractions, like a page for rides and stuff. I feel like it's like infinite scrolling where it just keeps going and going and going. Well, there is so much to do. I know. And so I want to start with just a couple of the big ones that for me I cannot miss. The number one ride for me at Hershey Park every time, and I love to start my day and end my day with this, is the Great Bear. It is the best roller coaster there in my opinion. I know there are newer ones. I know there are faster ones. I know there are ones with bigger drops now. There are more modern roller coasters than this one. But the Great Bear for me is one that it has corkscrews. You go upside down. You go fast. You have a big drop at the beginning. You go right over the water. It has the sound of a roaring bear as you're going down all of these hills. It is just, to me, one of the most perfect rides, perfect roller coasters that you can go on. It's smooth. You get off without feeling like you have a headache, but it feels like a very thrilling, fun ride. And so this, for me, hands down, best ride in the park. Yeah, that ride's awesome. And I feel like one of the things that I love, this is a precursor, but one of the things that I personally love about Hershey Park is the lines are typically so, so digestible. (laughs) I mean, you are not looking at like night. I mean, I guess it depends on when you go, but when we go, it's you really aren't waiting in line that long. For most things. Yeah, I agree. And I have been at certain points, you know, because I've been so many times in my life. I went in high school sometimes with friends or on field trips and stuff. Sometimes I went with all my cousins and my grandparents. But most of the time, because especially now with so many more big rides, 
it kind of breaks up the crowd a little bit. So you don't have everybody waiting in line for the three or four thrill rides. There are so many big coasters that it kind of breaks it up. And I haven't been this year, so I can't speak for that. But I would venture to say they've added even newer rides with those new Jolly Rancher ones. Yeah, Um, that new Jolly Rancher one, I don't remember what they replaced it with. But it actually, it's it's like a re-theming of an older ride. If you if you remember what it's called, you can tell me. But um, yeah, it looks really cool. I was actually watching a video about it recently, and when you go through, um, when you go through a, a like one of the tunnel areas or through like a little barn, they're actually uh spraying like Jolly Rancher scents in the air, so it smells like Jolly Ranchers what? when you're riding it, which is very 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 cool. Um. Jolly Rancher Remix is the ride. It is. And it says, experience five randomized Jolly Rancher flavor rides like watermelon or green apple, complete with different music, lights, and more. Could you imagine imagine doing that with, like, the Harry Potter jelly beans? Where it's, like, randomized (laughs) scents of, like, vomit and poop. Oh, my gosh. And grass. Gross. Grass would be nice, but I'm a dad who mows a lawn now, so I'm obligated (laughs) to like the smell of grass. Gross. (laughs) <laughs> that is awesome. I'm excited to try this new Jolly Rancher ride. That's great. Okay, so you have the Great Bear. What else? What else? So the Great Bear. The other one that I absolutely love, and this is one of the rides that was pretty new when we first started going, and that is Laugh Track. And I, what I love about this ride is it is an indoor roller coaster, which in and of itself is very unique, but it also spins front and back. <laughs> What are you laughing again? I don't know. I'm just thinking about that ride. <laughs> You're just laughing because it makes you laugh when you ride it? Yeah, laugh. Laugh track. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're such a dad. <laughs> laugh track, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so basically, like, if you want to go on Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, which you can't get there, this is, like, second best. <laughs> basically. To be fair, we have not been on Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, but... Laugh Trek is a very fun ride, and it goes, it's sort of like a... It is actually very, very cool. It's sort of like a wild mouse type ride, which is another ride in the park Mm -hmm. I would highly suggest visiting, but it's indoors, and it's neon lights, black lights. Yeah, you're going through black lights. It's really, it's fun. It's not scary, but it's like No, it's not scary. Sharp turns, stuff like that, And and the queue is cool because it's like a carnival. Yes. Without clowns. Which is always nice. Correct. Clowns are the worst part of the carnival. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're gonna, this, this episode is going to take forever if we take too much time on attractions. You have a couple more on here that look great. Wild Mouse, you said, was one that yes, you Wild Mouse, like. That's an old I one. I could skip it, though. Like, if I was my ideal day, I don't have to go on that. Yeah. The other ones that I would say are non-negotiables that I want to focus on are Lightning Racers. This. Heck yeah. Folks folks lightning and thunder this baby one. no one says lightning and thunder but that's like the two different tracks you go yeah on. but you say thunder and lightning <laughs> nobody says lightning and thunder <laughs> well i did <laughs> <laughs> anyway lightning racers it is old school wooden coasters <laughs> It's like old school wooden coasters we are to race each other everyone. because we're not. Don't <laughs> don't don't get your don't get your lines crossed. Um, <laughs> uh, you're on two different tracks and you Red race each other green. literally. Yeah, it's really fun. It's very very very. It is fun. very fun. Um, and so this is one that it's really fun to ride in the opposite track from the person that you're at the park with. So when Stephen and I go, why are you laughing? <laughs> Okay, first of all, I'm not. Secondly, I'm looking at the Granny Bugs ride. It's just so <laughs> upsetting. Yeah, we like to ride opposite to see who beats who, and Paige like has to win. So I like I tip I tip my uh, roller coaster operator like twenty bucks to make him slow it down <laughs> a little bit. You do not. You do not. No, I don't. Okay, don't. speaking of my competitive streak. Yeah, guys. Here we go. I know what you're going to say. I know. The Reese's Cup Fusion. This rock. What was, what did it used to be? The Reese's Cup Challenge or something? Like yeah, extreme like the sports? extreme Reese's Cup yeah. Challenge. They've rethemed it. It's really good, actually. It is 
It's amazing. very good. When we went last year and I was pregnant, this is actually the only ride we rode in the whole park. We rode it like 10 well, times. Well, then you got to ride. I wrote other things, which there's one on my list that is not on yours because you didn't get to ride it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I also don't ride some of the rides in the park, but Reese's Cup Fusion, 10 out of 10 recommend. Yeah, it, it's very cool. Um, the line really stinks because it's very, very long and you have to like endure the same video over and over and over and over again explaining what the ride is. Well, and in it, um, okay, to be fair, it explains how to score yeah. the points. But yeah, so this is like, uh, so obviously we are like fourth and first and foremost a Disney podcast so like it's basically you know a, a hybrid between toy story mania and buzz Lightyear your astro blasters um but like you're shooting innocent candy boys instead it's it's so they're evil fun, candies though. yeah they're like <laughs> yeah it's it's so fun though um and then we had we wanted like what you said 10 but i think that's a little bit over over dramatic i think we I did think it we like legitimately wrote it six times i would say like four or five or six times somewhere in there but the last time we wrote guys. it was wild. Okay, guys. So, yeah, <laughs> wild. So we're waiting in line, and this is like our fifth or sixth time doing this, right? So we get up to the front, and we're getting ready to load into our vehicle. We're getting ready to sit down. And they say, you're about to ride with the champion of Reese's Cup Fusion. <laughs> the absolute goat. And we're like, what are you talking about? And they're like, no, this person scores a perfect score. They max out the game every time they play. So they're coming up through the like fast pass equivalent line. Yeah, they're like single rider. Correct. So we're going on with them and it's four per people per 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 like ride vehicle. And so we're sitting in the front and Can there's I... a lady behind us. And all of a sudden we're waiting for this like middle-aged man who maxes I thought... out the ride every time. I thought it was going to be like a fat dude with a chin beard. Yes. That's what I thought, with, honestly. With like a backwards hat ready yeah. to go. Yeah. And, and, and lo and behold, <laughs> we turn around and it's this girl who's probably... 13 years old <laughs> this kid could fit in my pocket dude like she was so small she's got glasses and she's got like a little kid haircut and she gets into the ride vehicle and we're like what in she the like world? had an oversized sucker that was bigger than her head like, like this is the person who is like the goat of reese's cup fusion and it turns out she lived nearby she has season passes. She comes almost every day because she lives nearby. So she's learned the ins and outs of the ride. And so Steven is like, crap. This is my worst nightmare. Now I'm going to feel self-conscious well, I already that feel... I'm going to get beat by this little girl. And yeah. I take this as an opportunity well... to say, excuse me, miss. Could you teach me some of your secrets so that I can beat everyone else I ever play at this You're ride? making me sound like a toxic monster who cannot be beaten by anyone younger than me or the opposite <laughs> uh, assigned gender of birth than me. So I just... <laughs> um, She was very good, though. I scored like... She got a perfect score. It was like 999,999 yeah, let's, let's say I scored like maybe 60,000 points. This girl's like almost kicking a million. And she's like blowing off her gun after the end of it. She's like, no biggie. It's cool. I'm so the master. We're not sharing any of her secrets. I don't remember any of her secrets because I, I was like, I remember overheated. two of her secrets. We're not sharing any of those on here, but all of that to say if you're competitive, if you love Buzz Lightyear or Toy Story Mania, you should absolutely check out the Reese's Cup Fusion. They have done an incredible job it's super making good. this ride new and fresh and fun but still the same competitive feel with this arcade style um but all within the theming of Hershey Park and what it is really about that each of these rides are reminiscent of the candy and the Hershey feel so absolutely can't miss um and then the last one for me the only other roller coaster that I absolutely can't miss is Sky Rush now I do have to take my inhaler before I get on this. Ride. What did I marry? Millhouse Van Out <laughs> I'm just keeping it real with her followers. I have asthma. 
and the beginning is a very, very steep drop that I start to panic a little bit. But once I get over the big drop, the beginning, <laughs> stop, I know I'm a nerd. Yeah. Sky Rush. Okay. Fantastic. Ha- I take my inhaler. <laughs> Having you inha- choose what you want to do. Having an inhaler doesn't make you a nerd. Yes, but it is the stereotype in movies. All right. And shows. Um, so you just called me Millhouse. So <laughs> <laughs> you're familiar with The Simpsons. That is, that is oh, the insult man. that was just thrown my direction. <laughs> okay. Any other attractions you can't miss? Those are mine. Yeah. So I'm like, all the attractions there are great. I hate the water park, so I'm not even going to get into that. I, I like I want... the lazy river, but I could do without it because if we're not going to no way, like dude. change into our bathing suits and hang out there, it's not worth it. I don't want anything to do with the water park, so I'm just going to pretend like it doesn't exist. Um, I love Candemonium. It's one of their new, new, yes. a, newer roller coasters. It's very, very, very good. I think that was the new one last year. Yeah. They usually bring out yeah. one new thing each year. They're pretty good about it that. It was weird because it, it's thrilling. It doesn't go upside down. It's not like a big, you know, rock your socks off kind of roller coaster. But it's still really fun. It's fast. It's smooth. It's got a huge drop. I love it. I opted for the first row. When I wrote it, and it was weird because there was like nobody in line, so I basically walked onto it. I love that ride a lot. Um, I actually really, really like the Coal Cracker too. It's kind of um, it it's like this. It's basically like a it's basically like a water flume drop ride where they ran out of budget, so they couldn't theme it at all. <laughs> but it's really fun. I mean, it's it's a good ride. Um, that one's definitely a keeper to me. And then um. You know, I got to be honest with you, too. I, I, I really like the kissing tower. It's fun. For smooching. It's really good, though. Like, you get up and you get a whole view of the park. Um, and it rotates. It, it so rotates, you can see yeah. Around. It's really good. Um, it's fun. And they give you, like, a whole history of Milton Hershey and, you know, everything going on there. Um, so it, that one's a lot of fun. Lightning Racers, like Paige said, that's one that I got to go on when I'm, when I'm there. Um, so that I can beat you every time. Yeah, Woo. whatever. And then the <laughs> other one that I actually really like is they have a great monorail system. They do. That's that kind of like kind of goes out of the park a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it's kind of a quote thing to do, but it goes into their zoo, uh, which they have a great zoo there. Um, it's just that one's a lot of fun. Their monorail is really cool. I, I, I like it. It's an open air concept monorail, and it's just it's a good time. Um, and then I think the only other one that I'm going to have to say that I really really like is you said did you say sky rush i did yeah that's, that's the, the one inhaler I, right yeah and i have to take my inhaler. Um, i really really like um you have fahrenheit storm runner those are the other ones you do that storm i do storm runner is good yeah storm runner is pretty cool but i'm gonna like bring it back a little bit and believe it or not i actually really like wildcat a lot that one's cool because it's like your classic wooden roller coaster um, it's similar to lightning racers with lightning and thunder as you, as if you will. Um, but it's just like, a, it, it's, it's, I don't know. It's different enough and it's a lot of fun. Did you say the wild cat? Yeah. I had severe whip rush on that ride <laughs> when I was like eight <laughs> and I, I hate that ride. I know that I wrote that one at one point without you. You wrote it by yourself. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you know what else is really good? There is a super duper looper. That is like everyone who grew up in the mid Atlantic yeah. area's very first upside down roller coaster because it does legitimately one loop. But the thing is, though, is you do not have shoulder braces. So and it's I was a like, slow loop. Yeah, I was like, you gotta be kidding me. I'm not about to go upside down without goes, my shoulders. Zip. <laughs> is that what it does? It does. Um, all right. We've already podcasted for like almost two hours tonight on a different thing that we did. So we're, we're a little bit, a little bit fun tonight. <laughs> A little bit goofy. Uh, yeah. All right. Did you have any other attractions that you have to do? <sighs> I have not done those drop towers, the three that they implemented just a couple years ago. You know, you like the scrambler. <laughs> so. You do, right? I love those kinds of rides. I actually love the Music Express, I think is what you're thinking of. I yeah. like the scrambler one yeah. where you kind of like swing across and then swing back and then swing across but the music express is the one that just kind of goes around in a circle and it goes up and down and if you sit on the outside you get squished by the person on the inside so they always say like sit the kids on the inside of the parent because it just kind of goes so fast that gravity or 
what is it inertia why can't i think of the word yeah iner inertia Vel velocity do you, do you even know what inertia <laughs> do i even know whatever if this is gonna be this kind of show i'm just gonna log off <laughs> Anyway, and then you go backwards, and it is very fun. I love those classic ones like Tilt a Whirl, those kinds of guys. So those are my attractions that I absolutely have to do. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty sharp. All right, let's let's bop on over to entertainment. Um, I feel like you're gonna have a lot more to say about entertainment than I am, but yeah, let's let's talk about it nonetheless. So the first thing in terms of entertainment is actually not inside the park gate but it is actually in hershey's chocolate world which you can go to without tickets into the park yeah this is this is really cool so the hershey's chocolate world tour is something that i have done every single time i've ever been to hershey park and i've actually gone to concerts at hershey or hockey games they have a like a junior league team called the hershey bears and when I've even gone to those kinds of things, I still went into Chocolate World just to go do the Chocolate World tour. It is so fun. And it is kind of an attraction, but I would I would consider it entertainment because you have like these singing cows <laughs> that kind of welcome you in and you go through the whole process of how the Hershey's chocolate is made. And it takes you through and you have the smell and then you feel the heat from when it goes through the oven process and you see it being mixed and then you end up coming out and you have all of these conveyor belts going above you and next to you of all of the different types of Hershey's candy and chocolate and it is it is a must do every time yeah. you go especially people coming from out of town if you um picture basically living with a land but chocolate yeah that's to me what it's like and yeah. then you do get a little chocolate treat at the end of it which you is you do yep Depending um, on the day, you'll get a different kind of candy or yeah, chocolate, just a small little, like, snack-sized one. It's it's a lot of fun, though. Um, it's very fun. They have other things, too, there, like build your own candy bar and, like, 3D shows. But those all cost money, and every time we go, we're like, eh, I don't really want to do this. Right. So we usually skip it. But um, that entire Chocolate World area is very, very cool because it's, um, it's their entire gift shop. You know, it's like the entire experience of everything they have. They have like a food court there, a Sunday bar, which I will definitely get into in a little bit. Um, yeah, that's that's great. I, I'm, I'm yeah, some of our favorite treats it. are at Chocolate World. So we'll talk yeah. about that with dining. But do you have any other things for entertainment? Um, I feel like they don't have that much entertainment there. They've kind of done away with some of it. They yeah. do have that uh, pavilion. And there used to be. Um, they had one pavilion where there was like this through the decades kind of show. And then they had one that was like fifties and sixties themed in like a high school, but it kind of rotated out. And then in the other pavilion that was indoor, you had the Christmas show that we went to that you thought was super cheese ball where they went up in the attic Suck. and they found the music box and I thought it was fun. Oh my gosh. And then we something, saw something, the... something dead grandma. It was terrible. No, it was fun. It was cute. And then there was the dueling piano show. That one was okay. Which was fantastic. Yeah, that was cool. That one was really good. But I think probably with COVID, they probably made some changes and um, kind of nixed some entertainment kind of like Disney yeah. did. Yeah, And I, I don't know that many of those things are back. So we'll have to kind of see yeah. what they do with those pavilion spaces. They have, um, they do have the Our Friends from the Sea show, which is like a, a sea lion or seal show or whatever. I have very mixed feelings about that because I'm like, do we need to take aquatic marine anim marine life and like make them perform for our entertainment? Um, I understand, but it yeah, is sweet I just, to see it. I typically don't know. I mean, I, I, I you know. I'm sure everyone has good intentions, but I don't know how. Well. I'm sure these animals are be are treated fine, but it's like, do I want to, you know, uh, balance a ball on my nose for people to clap? Like, I don't, I don't think so. So, why do these poor seals want to do it? Well, maybe um, they find it entertaining. But I'll still watch know. them and, and cackle at their at their misfortune, I suppose, and clap for um, them, and then they get yeah, a fish because they, they have did well. They have a bunch of like meet and greets with the terribly upsetting mascots. They are not terribly um, upsetting. They're seen, actually very well done. Have you seen Miss Twizzler? 
<laughs> yes, have you gotten your picture with the Hershey Kiss? I've never gotten my picture with. Oh yeah, I think I have actually. With yeah, you. We, yeah, we literally did get a picture with her. Yeah, once upon a time. So entertainment. Uh, all I'm going to say is entertainment in in Hershey Park is lacking for sure. But I think that where they do lack in entertainment, the the attractions make up for it tenfold. One hundred percent. So all right, let's talk about uh, dining because, you know, what can you say about dining in a place that's founded on chocolate? Okay, so I'm going to start out with probably something that most people would disagree with, but especially if you have picky eaters or kids, there are plenty of options that they would be used to outside of the park, like Chick-fil-A, Subway, and Moe's, which I actually am a big fan of Moe's. It's like Chipotle, but it tastes more fresh to me. I know Steven hates on it. No, 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 no. I like Moe's. It's the line. And no, no. It is the fact that they almost certainly do not wipe up in between making burritos. So there's just like rogue queso all over the place when they're folding up their terrible burritos. But it's still delicious. <laughs> it's, it's tolerable. I think it's delicious anyway. And so those are some of the lunch options that I usually go with just because it's reliable. I know what I'm getting. It's cheap enough fast food that I'm used to. I'm not going to eat something I'm not used to and then go ride a roller coaster and get sick. So for lunch options, that's kind of like my go-to. There's also plenty of snacks. They have really good like boardwalk style fries um, towards that middle area by like the Great Bear. They have dip and Dot stands. They've got Rita's, which if you're not familiar, if you're not from this area, or if you're from an area that does not have Rita's, it's like Italian ice, but they also have really good, like, do they call it custard? What do they call it? Gelato? Yeah, it's custard. It's yeah. like a, yeah, it's, it's, it's like, their own kind of thing. It's kind of like ice cream, but it's lighter and creamier. Um, And then my absolute go-to snack at Hershey Park that I have to get every single time is a massive s'more. You you put so much emphasis in your hand motions when you said that. You are like serious s'mores business right about now. I think about the s'mores at Hershey Park very often. And right now I can't eat them because no dairy. So I cannot have milk chocolate. However, one day I will be able to enjoy this again. And so I will, next time we go, hopefully be able to partake in a s'more. But they used to have a little s'more stand. Right when you walked into the old entrance to the left side, kind of where the carousel used to be. And now that area was for like tables and sitting down. Um, but they moved the s'mores actually into Chocolate World. Mm -hmm. And they come in these nice little boxes. Um, so it's less messy because these s'mores. They're unbelievable. You have to hold them with both hands. They're massive. Yeah. Are you are you like pro- like milk chocolate bar, or do you want to get the Reese's on there? No, I, I don't want a Reese's in my s'more. I, I like Reese's on their own. La, but la, la. I, <laughs> but I love an original Hershey's bar yeah. in my s'more. Dark chocolate Hershey's are my favorite by themselves. Mm -hmm. But in a s'more, I want a classic milk chocolate Hershey bar and some marshmallow and the nice cream. Crackers. They're super good. Um, I know that we have like a big one that we're going to get to for dining. So I'm just going to blast through a few things here. Um. I uh, so yeah I mean I I, I Moses is, is good in context but I got to be honest with you like I said the the Moes in Hershey is just like a bummer um so I would I would not recommend it I personally like the Spring Creek uh smokehouse they have a a very 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 good smoked brisket uh sandwich that that I would recommend um and then also this is horrible but I love the Nathan's hot dog food truck because like you can just grab yourself a little Nathan's hot dog. They make those buns all nice and toasty for you and you just put a little mustard on there and just eat it up yum good. Um Gross. I could so, not eat a hot dog so, on a hot day yeah. in a theme park when I'm so, about to ride it. I'm roller. all about that. Um I'll either do like I said I'll either do like a brisket sandwich or I'll do a hot dog. Um you know I I I do not I simply do not go to Hershey Park for the food. I mean, I will go for the good candies you can get. Um, the food is, like, not really for me. Is the brisket place the one down by the Trailblazer? Yeah, it's the Smokehouse. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and, yeah. So, the other thing, though, that I really like if I'm snacking is they have a very, very good kettle corn stand that um, yes. is exceptional. It's the German kettle popcorn. 
uh it's like on uh, it's called the boardwalk so it's like it's it's really great but anyway um they have one actually excuse me they have one on the boardwalk and they have one like in the entrance area on founders way right if you go in um, by the, where the old <clears throat> entrance was yeah. they have it's usually like a little amish gentleman i believe so yeah so um if this... you're not familiar pennsylvania has a very large amish population in like the lancaster area yeah so i know that um the very prevalent in terms of like working in the food industry around there yeah so uh we like to get the popcorn on our way out which is fun but for me personally the one thing that i discovered in um hershey park that i'm just like obsessed with are their jolly rancher slushes um they are really 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 good they have all kinds of different flavors i personally like like the green apple one or the blue raspberry but those are super good they're like uh they're kind of sour tart, they are pretty sour but they mm-hmm. are so good mm-hmm. um and refreshing yeah and then the last thing i think we want to go over for dining is the chocolatier this is a semi-newer restaurant that opened up um i think a couple of years back but was it last year um, it might have been, yeah, but basically, Hershey Maybe Park. The year before. They completely redid. I almost said reimagined, but we're not in Disney, are we? Um, Hershey Park completely redid their entrance area, and they made it more like a town center, which is very, very cool. They have a couple of like different patios and things, and um, indoor seating and outdoor seating at the Chocolatier. But the thing about this place is almost everything has some kind of chocolate in it, so. Like you can't even, you can't even get a burger without there being some kind of like a a chocolate hint to it. Um, whether it's like a Hershey barbecue sauce, like a chocolate barbecue sauce or whatever. Um, they have a chicken sandwich with a Reese's peanut butter cup on it and like a and like a jalapeno caramel grilled chicken. It it's crazy, but it is really really good it was amazing they have a peanut butter old-fashioned that's also extremely good and i'm like not an old-fashioned excuse me i'm not a peanut butter person right you're an old-fashioned guy yeah but you don't like peanut butter so but like the the point of it is like this place is incredible i i think that it was it, it was it was honestly the thing that was missing in hershey to me for like an experience right it was like a nice yeah. dining spot and this i think was the perfect thing also something cool about the chocolatier is one if you sit out by the window seats you can actually overlook part of the park which is amazing to be up because the chocolatier actually sits up above sort of a gift shop area and secondly um the tables and booths and chair spots in the restaurant many of them are pieces of old rides from Hershey so it's pretty cool to see some of the old pieces of some of the old rides and the history of Hershey Park in um in the dining area um and then the appetizers i thought were amazing in the drinks yeah the nachos the tortillas were like chocolate dusted or something yeah it was weird right one of the appetizer options came out on a ferris wheel i was gonna mention that it's like a um it's like a um one of those kind of appetizers where you it's like a sampler correct but it's on a ferris wheel it's it's really cool one of the things that makes me go crazy i haven't had it before but i need to (laughs) these guys is like they have a chocolate milkshake that has an entire piece of chocolate cake shoved into it. <laughs> I might make it the show art or the very least put it in show notes because this thing is like out of control. Um, it's it's really, really good. I mean, it's it's very, very, very good. Did you have anything else for dining? I think that's. That's all yeah, I can think of. Yeah, like I said, there's not a whole lot to write home about except for the chocolatier. I mean, it's great. Um, my only recommendation, though, would be get reservations because otherwise you're going to be sitting there like a like a, like a a snork waiting to get in. We we did not have reservations. And we waited a very long time. Yeah. We actually ended up having to get a spot at the bar. We just kind of hovered until some people left because it was supposed to be like a two or three hour wait if we were just yeah. waiting for a table. And that was fine. Like, I liked sitting at the bar. Yeah, but we, it was it, great. If you have kids or family, make a reservation um, for sure. So, all right. So now we're going to jump on over to like random things to do. We like to kind of end our segments with this where we just sort of talk about, I don't know, like just like little things that are fun to do that you may not think about. So they're not like attractions or entertainment necessarily or dining, of course. 
Um, but they're just like, you know, fun things to do otherwise. So Paige, you do have a list for this. So why don't you share some things that you like to do? Yeah, so there's a couple things. One of them is there's plenty of arcade games, actually, in Hershey Park. Oh, my gosh. Which are just kind of fun little things if you want to take a break from the crowds or the lines or the heat and go just play some old-fashioned arcade games, try to get some prizes. I always get... um. I always get completely tricked at the basketball section because I'm like, I can totally beat this and I can sink a three like no problem. And then I end up just looking like a total goof and I miss every time. And the guy's like, mm, sorry, I guess you don't get your uh, stuffed Hershey boy. And I'm like, I know. So part of that is those games, some of them are designed so that it is very difficult to win. For They're example, like oval, right? Yeah. Right. The basketball ones are oval. Yeah. Uh, but they only fit directly in the middle. Like you have to basically S- sink a three, baby. Sink a three. There I think the Milton Hershey would be very disappointed in that structure. He, he would probably um, be very disappointed. But yeah, the arcade is really cool. I'm I'm a believer. And then the next thing, which is not technically an attraction because it's sort of connected to this, and that is Zoo America. Which Stephen alluded to earlier when he was mentioning the monorail going over the zoo, they have a really nice little zoo attached here, and it you have access to this with your park ticket for the day. So I would highly recommend the entrance to it. You can just pop on over by like the kids area and the Hershey Triple Towers. Um, the entrance into Zoo America, you just get your hand stamps and go through. They've got bald eagles. They've got all kinds of other birds they have what are some of the other animals that we saw last time i don't remember remember. they have a ton to be completely honest with you i really do not remember well so they have woodlands they have big sky country the great southwest so there's a ton of different animals and it's a small little zoo area but they also have workers and employees that will talk to you about the animals and um, just things about the animals and how they care for them. So it's a fun little kind of educational experience and a little break in the day, Um, though there is so much to do just with inside the gate of the park. Um, Zoo America is attached, and you can enter through the side of the park and then just come right back on in once you're finished. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, zoos are zoos, but this is, it's fun to have an option to go out and do something else when you're in a theme park. Yeah, absolutely. All right, the last two things that I had are specific to holidays in the park. And one of those would be Hershey Park in the Dark, aka Halloween. This one is so fun for me. I've talked extensively before on the podcast about my love for Halloween. And this is no exception. They turn the names of some of the rides. Like, I know that they call the Great Bear the Great Scare. And so they sort of have different changes like that. But there's also trick-or-treating um, and different exclusives for that. Different um, rides where they turn the lights out on the coasters. And so there's lots of fun things that are specific to Halloween. Did you have, you've never been for Halloween, have you? Yeah, I have. We went together. You went for Christmas. No, we did both. We did? Yes. Oh, I don't remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember going. Well, the last one is Christmas time, and so they call this um, Candy Lane, Mm -hmm. Hershey Park Christmas Candy Lane, and it is so fun. They do such a good job. They also have a drive-through lights experience. That is outside of the park, but we've actually driven up there before and not gone into Hershey yeah. and just did the drive through lights. There are people that drive from all over um, Pennsylvania and all over different states um, and come just to do this drive through. But they have Santa and reindeer and all kinds of fun things um, themed and snacks and shows. That's where we saw that show that I like and Stephen thought was cheesy. It oh, was, the terrible Christmas show where like where Grandma's soul attic. was in the attic. Yes. Yeah, that was, that it was, was not fun. great. It was fun. And then a giant Christmas tree. So they really do an amazing job with holidays. And the the light drive through thing is called Hershey's Sweet Lights. It is actually two miles of wooded trails. And you do have to buy tickets 
um, to do that. So it's not just a little free drive through, but it is very fun and very worth it. Yeah, it's it's definitely pretty cool. Um, I, I that really does cover like random things to do. I mean, I the thing with Hershey Park, the way that I see it anyway, is that you can pretty much have a full day there and do everything you want to do, <clears throat> basically. I mean, if you want to do like the water park, that's going to be a different situation. But if you're just looking to go hang out on rides and have dinner at the Chocolatier and stuff, it, it's more of a compact park. So you're not stressed out about being able to do everything you want. Right. Um. So it, it's cool. And and then, I mean, as like a as like a breath of fresh air for people who are big Disney fans, like, you know, our audience, we presume, and, and, and also us, um, <laughs> you can get the best season pass you possibly can imagine for Hershey Park for 240 bucks. Right. That's so cheap. And that includes, I mean, obviously it, it includes unlimited amount of summer visits. Um, you basically get unlimited visits for, for everything you want. You get free parking. You get 50, 15% off all food, retail, games, uh, early access, um, invitations to year round events, additional 35% off for like, uh other friends who want to buy tickets um you get to have a straight up a free all your drink plans you can get all the all the cokes you want yeah you just bring your little um, cup we did that and, and we then just bring our cup every time we went and we got to refill it you also get uh access to um like hot beverage plans for christmas and stuff like that so it's it's really really nice and then like if you want to go for the cheap version it's 160 bucks a person per year so if you're a Disney Disney guy or gal, um, you're spending basically 160 bucks like per park <laughs> per day. Yeah. So um, yeah, the I mean, obviously we know this isn't Disney. I mean, we we get it. Um, it's it's less desirable, I think, for us. Like we'd rather go to a Disney park, but for what it is, it's a good time and um, it, it's just fun. It, it's affordable. Like you can get in for the entire day for. Um, I don't know, like fifty six bucks for a day ticket, which isn't that bad. Um, so you know, I mean, it's it's good stuff. It's fun. Yeah, we, we love it. And the only other things I say, I like I said earlier, I've been to concerts there. They have a really fantastic concert venue. I've seen several giant acts there, and then there's also the hockey team that's right there that plays in the ice rink. Um, yeah. right next door. And then Hershey's Chocolate World, which we talked about. Um, and so there's so many things to do, even if you just want to go and spend the day kind of seeing what Hershey is about and not even having to go into the park. There is also a hotel that's affiliated with Hershey. We have not stayed there. We've stayed off property before. Um, but there is a Hershey hotel and there's lots about the history of Milton Hershey. There's a Milton Hershey school. So there's this massive um, cultural and historical piece and the impact that Milton Hershey has had on this area of Pennsylvania that you can even take some time to explore that if you like history and wanting to know more about his background and what the Milton Hershey school does and how they give back to the community. So there's yeah. so much to do even outside of the parks. Actually, part of every park ticket goes into the school and the community and stuff. It's it's pretty cool. Yeah. And what's absolutely. one of the interesting facts about Hershey Park that I, I find really intriguing is that they built it for employees to just hang out. <laughs> That's how it started was for mm -hmm. employees to just kind of um, enjoy their day. So, I mean, when you look at companies today, like um, the big box store up in washington or whatever it's like wow they could they could certainly take some notes mm -hmm. um it'd be nice to have a theme park for your employees you yeah, know and absolutely uh, happy workers you know that's it's a good thing so yep. Yep. anyway hershey park 10 out of 10 recommend we love it there um and uh yeah it's been a lot of fun talking about it it's kind of cool mixing things up a little bit too we, we, we do so much talking about disney and of course that is the emphasis of what we basically go for but um uh, having discussion about other things is, is refreshing. Um, and there's so much that Hershey Park has to offer that I think a lot of people might not even know about it or they might not have ever been able to visit if they don't live near it. Um, it is much cheaper than going on a Disney vacation. So if you have other things in the mid-Atlantic area that you've never been out here and want to check out, it's not far from Washington, D.C. or Baltimore or Philadelphia. Or even New York City, frankly. Right, or New York City or... Um, 
you know, Pittsburgh. Like there's so many other cities you could make a sort of a vacation and have Hershey be a one or two day stop on that. So we just wanted to share a little bit about that. It's sort of like a park that is close to home for us, literally and figuratively. And so we wanted to share a little bit about that um, and give you kind of our ideal day in Hershey Park. Yeah, that's going to wrap it up for us. Um, You know, as always, we have a great time catching up with everybody, uh, talking about the things we love and and theme parks and and stuff like that. You can find us online at theparksacademypod.com where we have regular blog posts going out. Um, We post a bunch of content about what's going on in Disney parks and other parks alike. Uh, You can follow us on the Parks Academy on Instagram. We are on Patreon if you so choose to support us there. That'd be so appreciated. Um, and then also, you know, you can always, uh, reach out to us, uh, if you have questions or comments or anything like that, we'd love to chat with you guys. And, and uh, finally, you know, we, just, we, we, we really, really do appreciate all the support and love we're getting from you guys out there. Um, it, it makes, it makes doing the show a lot of fun. Um, and, uh, our fans are, are awesome. Uh, one little bit of housekeeping business though, that I probably should have added at the beginning of the show, but I didn't. So here it is at the end. Um, we did, uh, create and release some merch on our website. So we have some really cool t-shirts that are like class of series. So they highlight every Disney park, um, in the United States and, and have like the iconic, uh, sort of structure of the park along with the date that it was founded or, or opened. Uh, we have some coffee mugs, stickers, other t-shirts, onesies, you name it. We pretty much got it on there. So uh, feel free to check that out. And if you want to buy something but do not want to pay full price, we do have a discount code uh, TPA20, TPA20, for 20% off any purchase that you make online. So thanks again so much for listening. Uh, this has been Paige and Steven of the Parks Academy, and we will catch you next time.